Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to speed up or slow down videos using Adobe Premiere Pro CC. That's right. So for example, a friend of mine uh, approached me and said, hey, I, you know, I did this five hours of digital painting, art, and Photoshop. And of course, five hours is too long and probably too boring for someone to watch you do. She wanted to speed it up and take it all the way down to maybe five minutes. So she wanted to know how to do that, especially since she broke it up into multiple clips. You know, she would record some, take a break, go do something else, pause the video, come back, and it ended up being like 20 clips all together. So we're gonna take all those clips, 19, 20, how many ever it is, put them in Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna show you the techniques that you can easily and quickly speed it up from five hours all the way down to five minutes. So let's get started. I've got Premiere Pro open. This is the latest version of CC as of the recording of this video. And I've also, um, I'm on the assembly time uh, or, or, or uh, workspace. I could also jump between that and editing from time to time, but we'll start off on assembly. Now, there's nothing in this project. It's untitled, brand new. I just said new project. Saved it out to the hard drive and I didn't do anything else to it. So we need to import the media. And of course we can double click here or click um, and go find the media, but I know where the media is. It's in my desktop. Um, it's on a, in a folder on my desktop called Catwoman, Catwoman Painting. And there it is, the 19 clips. And what I did is I uh, had her name them in order, just zero, 01 all the way down to 19. And why you wanna put the zero 01 as opposed to just one is because then the sorting will work. Because if you do one and 10 and two and 12, you know, they might, they're 20, they might get out of order. So this way they definitely stay in order. All right, we're gonna select all 19 clips and we're just gonna drag them right in. Now again, I could have uh, done that just as easily with the import, but this will not only put them in, as you can see it, put them in in the numerical order. Now, the next step, once you get all your clips in or get them in the order you want them in, the next step that we want to do is make a sequence, a timeline. Right now, there's no sequence. One of the easiest ways to do that is to simply drag one of the clips onto the sequence window. So, for example, if I take this number one and drag it over, it will not only make a new sequence, but more importantly, it makes a new sequence based on that video. So whatever frame size that video is, whatever frame rate, whatever codex it uses, whatever it uses, it makes a sequence based on that. Now, now that I've got the sequence, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. Delete the video from it. I, I, it leaves the sequence behind. And here's the sequence, it always names it the same as the clip, but we're gonna, um, we're gonna call this Catwoman Time Lapse because that's what it's going to ultimately be. So that way we know which one that is. All right, so now that we got the Catwoman time-lapse sequence ready to go, now we're gonna take those 19 clips. Now you can drag them down one at a time. You could attempt to drag them onto the timeline altogether, but depending on what you do, you could have mixed results. And I'm gonna give you a way that just makes sure it works perfectly every time. Select the 19 clips, not the timeline, not the sequence, and there's a button down here called Automate the Sequence. And that button will be grayed out if you don't have a sequence yet. So we have, that's why we have to make the sequence first. So we're gonna say Automate the Sequence and look at what it lets me do. It does it in selection order, sort order, if you're doing it from a bin, for example. Uh, we want them sequentially, we want them to overwrite. We don't want any transitions, just put them in as straight cuts, one after another. And um, that's it. So now I just click OK, and boom, all 19 clips are on the timeline, in order, ready to go. Uh, so that's all I had to do to make that happen. Now the next thing is, they, you know, again, now it says this timeline is 5 hours, 25 minutes, 56 seconds. Now we need to shrink this down. And actually I'm going to rename this now that I think about it. I'm going to call this, this one Catwoman. Um, without the time lapse, because now we're going to make the one with the time lapse, and we're going to actually make a new sequence from this existing sequence 
so that we'll be able to select this 19 uh, clip video as one thing, one video. Because right now, if I wanted to speed this up, I'd have to painstakingly go through them one by one, select them and speed each one up and then fill in the gaps. But if I do it this way, let's right click on this Catwoman sequence. Let's make a new sequence from clip, even though that's, you know, you think that's not really a clip, it's a sequence, but it still works. That will give me a new sequence and look at what it did. It just put that whole sequence on there as one piece. So now we're gonna go ahead and call this one Catwoman time lapse. All right, so this will be the one that we speed up. So now that we're on the Catwoman time lapse, we can either uh, get to the speed controls with on the Mac, Command R, um, PC, Control R, or I like to do it from a right click. If you just right click and go to speed and duration, that'll bring up this window. And the thing I love about this window is that you can do it either one of two ways. You can speed it up by a percentage, or my favorite way is just to tell it how long or short I want it to be. So if I come here and say, no, 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 we don't want that to be five hours. We don't even want it to be 25 minutes. We want it to be five, or not, uh, yeah, five minutes, and how about zero seconds, zero frames. So let's make a five minute video out of this whole thing. And it will do the math for the percentage once I click okay. So once I click okay, that has shrunk down that video. Now notice that there's a separate audio track and I don't have them linked. This video is silent, there is no audio. So I can go ahead and delete that track. There's no audio to worry about. Um, and typically if you're speeding something up or slowing it down, you don't want any audio because it will sound like gibberish if it's sped up or it's sound like if it's slowed down. So you're typically doing this on a clip with no audio anyway. Um, so this has no audio in it anyway, but when you make a uh, new clip from a sequence, it always puts down an audio track, even if that audio track is silent. Uh, so now we've got this down to four minutes, 59 seconds, 29 frames, because usually the math won't be exact depending on, uh, on the, a lot of factors. We'll just put it that way. All right, so now if I were to hit uh, the space bar on this to play it back, and here we'll play it back at maybe quarter res just to see how that does, because it does need to be rendered. But here, let's go ahead and play this back. Oh, I was already playing it back. And there it is. So now it's happening much faster than she actually did it in real time. It's happening at a fraction of the speed, which I could go back and look at what that percentage ended up being. But as you can see now, that video is it. It's ready to go. Now, of course, at this point, you can add your fade in, fade out, titling, anything else you want to happen, a lower third, explaining you know maybe different steps of the process over the five minutes you can do any other editing you want to do at this point because you've already sped up your main clip so um, if this is all you want it you're done if you want to add more you can continue editing using the premiere pro uh, features now there's one more thing i want to show you um, as it relates to uh, we we sped this one up i'm going to show you an example and a new feature of slowing something down so let's say we're, we're going to be done with this one for now. I'm going to go um, double click on the um, project window here. And that will bring up the, hey, what do you want to bring in? What do you want to import? Um, and, I, or the, and what I want to do here is I want to go in and go to my live streaming overlays. I've got some stock videos here. And these are some video backgrounds that I've downloaded from Adobe Stock. And they're relatively short. Um, for example, there's one uh, that looks like snowflakes falling down, like that one. And I want to go ahead and import that one in. All right, so um, once that clip comes in, it's uh, 8 seconds, 10 frames. So it's very short. And what I want to do now is um, make a new sequence out of that. So we'll just right click on it, new sequence from clip. That will give me a new timeline that has nothing to do with Catwoman or Catwoman time lapse. I have a new one now. And same thing, I can either Command R or right click on that and get right back to the same window. So now in this case, I want to make this one longer. In other words, I know it's going to seem backwards, but I want to shorten the percentage. So let's say I make it 50%. So that will make it 16 seconds instead of 8. Or if I do it 25%, that will be 
33 seconds instead of eight. Um, now, the new feature that I want to show you is, uh, if I were to, let, let's say I didn't make any other changes uh, with the time interpolation. If I were to click OK on that and hit play, the problem with slowing down an animation too slow is it starts to look choppy. So this one doesn't look too bad, but I've slowed it down at one point to where the snowflakes look like they were just literally dropping down a frame at a time. And um, my buddy Jason Levine told me about this new ad, added um, interpolation feature called optical flow. So frame sampling from his, from his words, is probably the least attractive one to use. Frame blending is a little bit better, but optical flow is probably gonna be the best one. So let's, uh, let's try that one instead. And uh, again, and you can even see, and I know it's playing back at quarter res, but you can just see how much smoother that one would be or a little smoother uh, using that option. So that means that if it's going to be smoother, then I can probably go in and uh, get a little bit, uh, make it a little bit longer than I would have been able to with the other option. So now we've made it um, one minute and 23 seconds from an eight second clip. And yeah, that's, that's a little too much. I can still see it being choppy. So we might have to back off that a little bit more. So let's go experiment some more. Let's try, uh, what did I try before? Let's try 20%. Let's make it 41 seconds. All right. That's almost acceptable. So maybe 25% would be okay. And this is cool that I can experiment with it with this before having to do any rendering whatsoever. All right, that one would probably be acceptable as a animated background. And again, it depends on your personal preference for the quality of how you want that to look. This is something that will be playing on a green screen behind me on one of my live streams. So that one might be okay. I might want to take it up to 30% to just to make it look a little smoother. But you can go in either direction. You can either slow things down or speed things up and use the new optical flow. Test that for quality to see if that makes it look better. There we go. Yeah, 30% is right on the money. And so I've taken an eight second clip and made it now 20 seconds, 27 seconds long. So doing the opposite of what we did with Catwoman. Taking a painting that was five hours down to five minutes. In this case, taking something that was only eight seconds and stretching it out, making it 27 seconds. Now, of course, um, one of the other tools you can use on the timeline is the rate stretch tool. The rate stretch tool is instead of you doing it mathematically, because you, you might not know exactly how many seconds or frames or whatever you need something to fit. Maybe you're trying to make something fit within a certain edit in your video. So the rate stretch tool does exactly that. Uh, you can click on your clip and literally drag it. And it, instead of it um, uh, trimming the clip, it's actually making the clip longer or shorter using uh, the time rate, time, uh, time rate stretch tool. All right, so that will help you um, when you're trying to make something fit a specific spot on the timeline. That works great. All right, so hopefully this helps you uh, with your videos that you want to speed up or slow down. Uh, you can go check out Victoria's Catwoman video. I think I've got, uh, let's go check out her page at pavlovphotography.com. And if we go to her YouTube channel, um, we go to our YouTube channel and I think it's probably the video she just posted, but there it is, the Catwoman video. Uh, we made it six minutes long instead of five minutes. And she added a music track to it using royalty free music from uh, YouTube. So there it is. You can check it out and uh, see it in action. So with that said, cheers, take care. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Uh -huh.